Corporal Dietrich was a member of the United States Colonial Marine Corps, serving as a field medic. In 2179, she was part of the platoon of Colonial Marines dispatched aboard the USS Selco on a rescue mission to the Weyland Utani terraforming colony Hadley's Hope on Archon LV426. Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps. It is Alien Sunday and we are painting the last of Second Fire Team. We are on Dietrich. She is the combat medic for the team. Now, I'm not going to lie, pretty much the same painting as every other model in this squad. They are wearing the same uniform. If you've watched one video, it's going to be very similar. So I'm going to be talking over everything. But as usual, Black Prime heavy dry brush of the pallid witch flesh and then we kicked things off with the sand golem. In 2179 Corporal Dietrich and her platoon was sent to investigate the loss of contact with Weyland Utani colony Hadley's Hope located on LV426. Once the Selico arrived near the planetoid Dietrich and the others awoken from hypersleep. Dietrich got up next to her fellow squad mate Drake, who complained to her that they don't get paid enough for this, and proceeded to tell him not enough to wake up next to his face. Dietrich and the rest of her platoon were present during the mission's briefing by the squad's new commanding officer, Lieutenant Gorman. During the briefing, Dietrich listened to Ellen Ripley, the mission's consultant, telling her encounter with a hostile creature that she and her crew encountered 57 years prior and how it killed them all off. Ripley believes the same kind of creature is responsible for the loss of contact with Hadley's Hope and they will most likely encounter them once they land on the planetoid. After landing on LV-426, the Marines arrived at Hadley's Hope and began their sweep of the complex to investigate what happened to all the colonists. During the sweep, Ripley and the Marines found a survivor from the colony, a young girl named Rebecca Jordan. They took the girl to the operation centre where Dietrich tended to the girl and determined that she is physically fine except for a few minor malnutrition issues, though she could not talk about her mental state. During this time, Rebecca, who went by the name Newt, was asked by Ripley what happened to the colonists and she told the marines they were all dead. Hudson managed to locate the colonists using their PDTs, tracing them to the colony's atmosphere processor prompting Dietrich and the other marines to set off to investigate and rescue any other survivors. For some reason we have lost camera focus, really annoying, but as you can see the sand golem is on. Uh, I'm going to try and fix up this view before we move into the next stage and the next part of the story. Uh, we're going to do pallet bone because she's got bandage on her hand and then we'll move into probably either the black or the camo green afterwards but let's continue her story whilst i'm fiddling with the camera oh there we go uh where were we upon entering the atmosphere processor the marines discovered the xenomorph hive dietrich noted that the hive walls were made out of some sort of excretion as the marines made it further into the processor lieutenant gorman ordered them to give up their pulse rifle ammunition to prevent gunfire from damaging the reactors only allowing them to be armed with flame units. The marines eventually discovered the bodies of the colonists cocooned on the wall, their chests ripped open. Upon inspecting a cocooned colonist, the colonist opened her eyes, which startled Dietrich who called out to the other marines that she found a live one. Dietrich immediately began medical treatment, ignoring Mary's desperate pleas for death, trying to reassure her that she was going to be alright. At that moment, the chest burst that inside the colonist violently erupted from her chest, forcing Sergeant Apone to incinerate the body and the creature. The dying creature's screeches woke the hive, and the squad's motion trackers began detecting movement all around them. The marines immediately switched to infrared scanning, but still could not see the threat. Ironically, Dietrich questioned out loud whether their targets would show up on the infrared at all. Just after making this statement, a xenomorph sneaked behind Dietrich and immediately snatched the corporal off the ground. In blind panic, Dietrich discharged a flamer, 
Unfortunately, Frost was caught in the line of fire and was incinerated along with the bag of ammunition he had collected from the other marines, which resulted in an explosion, killing a crow. After Ripley and the remaining survivors had escaped off the disastrous ambush, Hudson discovered that both Dietrich and Apone's data stream showed they were both still alive, although Ripley determined that they were both being cocooned and used as hosts to birth new xenomorphs. Ooh, horrible way to go. Um, Dietrich and Apone presumably dead either from the chestburster hatching or from the explosion of the atmosphere processing plant. That is a terrible way to go, guys. Like, they know they're alive. They're not going to be able to rescue them. So they just got to accept that they're either going to die to a chestburster and become a xenomorph. Or, ultimately, when Ripley blows up everything, they just were consumed in that explosion. Terrible, terrible way to go. Terrible. Ugh. Right, so I'm now working on the camo green, as you can see. Very simple steps here. Uh, personality and traits. Dietrich had a habit of insulting people when she had the chance, particularly those who liked to complain. But when it came down to business on a mission, Dietrich behaved professionally. When she found the live colonist on LV-426, she attempted to comfort the woman, telling her she was going to get her out of there. Oh, how terribly wrong she was. Equipment as a marine, Dietrich was outfitted with the standard issue M3 pattern ballistic armor for protection and a shoulder lamp attachment for illumination. As the squad's field medic, Dietrich also carried a first aid kit on her and for protection, Dietrich was usually armed with the M240 incinerator unit. So that's a lot about this character. I was looking at her photos. She doesn't seem to have anything special on her armor. Not that I'm painting any of this on, but <laughs> it's always worth checking it out. People like Drake had special things written on it. Frost as well. He had phrases written all over his armor. So I was checking to see if she had any of that, but she doesn't. So we're just going to go with our standard green. Working our way around. We'll also get the helmet done and the chest plate. But we can probably start swiftly moving along on this. While the armor's drying, I decided to work on the base. I'm not going to bore you with all that. So there you go. Boom. And then I grab the Reichlin Flesh Shade. I'm going to use this, obviously, on the skin to give her a bit of a classic look. Really, on these models, because they're only board game level figures, there's not a huge amount of detail to them. I've seen some people do amazing work on these figures but that's not for me i want to get these painted i want to get a nice safe coat of varnish on them i want to be able to play the game soon i am rocking first edition aliens i need to download second edition rules from gale force 9 uh but let me know if that actually bothers you in any way if it doesn't i might just play with the rule book that i got and then not have to worry about downloading the, the new edition I think it'll be fun to play through and we'll be able to record it. So this is going to be the final member of first squad. And then second squad is Vasquez uh, Hudson. Who else is in that one? Forgotten now. Forgotten who's in first squad. I always remember the main characters, but I also have the corporate man still to do. And then I've got Ripley carrying Newt. I've got the queen. I've got some special drone models that came out after the initial set then of course i also have the pilot team for the dropship and then bishop and then of course the crates and computer consoles god i got a lot to get through still hopefully at some point this year we'll be able to play aliens probably be around christmas at this rate uh, as you saw there i grabbed the grave lord gray i'm going to use this on the incinerator unit as usual i don't like using metallics. I know my last like five videos have been metallics and that's like driven me to breaking point. I'm not a huge fan of them. They do have a place, obviously. You know, you need to know how to use them. But for me, I don't enjoy painting with metallics. So I'm using Gravelord Grey on all their weapons where it makes sense to use it. Obviously, pulse rifles should be green. It's very hard because these guys have realistic looking armor. 
their armor makes sense. So when you're painting them, they end up looking very dark. There's a lot of green, there's a lot of earthy shades, there's flesh tones, there's dark gray. But they do look great. I really am loving the look of this. So at the end of this video, there'll be the glamour shots and then I'll also do a group shot so we can see first squad all together. And I'll probably do uh, Lieutenant Gorman with them. And then as part of second squad, we'll have Sergeant Apone with uh, Hudson Crow. Who is it? Hudson Crow, Vasquez. And uh, oh my God, begins with a P. I forget his name now. It's going to drive me nuts. But anyway, that guy. And then we'll work on Burke, the company man. Finish up with Bishop and Ripley and Newt. And then we finish off the aliens. They'll probably get done in one video altogether because they're very similar painting. And then it's just the terrain left to do. So we are getting there. It's what, six more videos? So I say six weeks. We should be able to play the game before Christmas. Right. Final color. Dark brown. Or hardened leather, I guess it's technically called. I'm gonna get the med kit here on the side, get all the strap and let it dry. I'll take the glamour shots. But I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you got any value from this, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. It really does help me out. And uh, let me know who on the alien cast I should paint up next. I'm thinking it might be Burke, just to do something fun that's not a marine. And then maybe we'll jump back and forth between the figures. So it's a marine, civilian, marine, civilian. Just so that I don't go crazy. Because these marines, they are very similar. I need something to break up the uh, monotony of painting green armor every week. But I definitely think painting this way is helping me. Anyway, enough of me talking. I hope you had a great week and I will catch you in the next video soon. Cheers for watching. Thank you.